Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Moto Mangi channel. My name's Mangi. This is my 2018 Honda Goldwing DCT Tour. I've had it for about three and a half years now. I have over 26,000 miles on it now. And today, I'm gonna go over my 25,000 mile review of this Goldwing. I'm gonna do that by doing my top five likes, my top five dislikes, a pros and cons list, so to speak. Let's get into it. All right, this is my top five pros for the Goldwing after, after three and a half years of ownership and 26,000 miles. I'm actually over 25,000 miles. I had 26 and a half thousand more or less. Uh, a few weeks ago, I had under at 24 and a half. And then I went down to the Smoky Mountains with a bunch of my friends for a week on a bike trip. And 2,000 miles later, I came back with 26 and a half thousand miles on the bike. So I kind of missed 25,000, but this will be my 25,000 mile Milestone review, whatever you want to call it. This is my top five pros list in no particular order, but I'll start as the electric windshield as my number one pro. This may be my favorite feature of the whole bike. I mean, it sounds silly to think an electric windshield is that good a thing to have, but I will never ever buy a touring motorcycle again without an electric windshield on it. That's how much this thing is awesome. <laughs> I wish Harley had a bike with an electric windshield on it. Thankfully, the Pan America has an adjustable windshield. It's a hand lever, but it's still adjustable. That's, you know, it's good. At least you can still move it up and down. It's a good compromise, but this electric windshield is just priceless. I use it every time I ride. I adjust every time I ride, depending on the wind conditions or the temperature or if I'm hot or cold. And it's so easy, I can just do it with a flick of a button. One of, if not the best features of the Goldwing is that electric windshield. Pro number two, I'll have to go with the DCT transmission, the dual clutch transmission on, the, on this Goldwing. Now you can buy this Goldwing with a six speed transmission too, but I got the DCT, which is the automatic. It's not truly automatic though. It's a dual clutch, meaning it still shifts gears with two clutches instead of one, but it shifts automatically. The computer controls it. There's no clutch for the rider to use. There's no foot shifter. Uh, there are paddle shifters for the thumb and forefinger on the handlebar. You can shift manually if you want to, put it in manual mode but it's still shifting with the dual clutch on the fly and the computer controlled. You're just telling it when to shift then. Yeah, I really like the DCT a lot. I'm almost willing to say that I would never buy a bike that's not a DCT ever again. I'm not sure, I may, you know, that's how much I do like it though. It's good for highway riding, it's good for town riding, it's good for sport riding, it's good for slow riding, fast riding. It's good in the rain. The DCT is awesome. And I am so, so glad I went and got the DCT. And when I first looked at them, I looked at the, the manual bike because I didn't think I wanted a DCT. I thought, who would get an automatic motorcycle? You know? But what do I know? <laughs> I'm glad I tested over the DCT. Pro number three, I'm going to go with the suspension on this bike. This Goldwing rides phenomenally smooth. And it handles good and the curves and the suspension is just great. I know when this Goldwing first came out, a lot of people complained the suspension was too soft, that it floated too much, but uh, I don't have that experience. I think it's wonderful. Coming from riding Harleys for, for 25 years, the suspension on this Goldwing is a godsend. <laughs> it just rides so much better than any Harley I've ever ridden or owned. Like, 
when I tested with this compared to my Rogue Glide Ultra, the difference was so startling that I almost thought something was wrong with my bike. Like, I literally thought something was wrong with my Rogue Glide. That's how much the difference was. It has adjustable preloads for the suspension in the uh, menu set up for like, if you have two riders up, one rider or one rider with luggage or two riders with luggage, different settings. I keep it on the one rider with luggage setting for the most, most of the time. When deer's on the back, I put it on two rider with luggage setup. Uh, if you put it with, without luggage, it's a, little, it's a little softer, but put it on the with luggage setup, it gets a little stiffer. And I like that in like the curves and stuff when you're riding twisties and everything. It's easy to adjust, you can do it in a matter of seconds. I know Traxian Dynamics makes a suspension upgrade for this and everyone says it's really good. And maybe someday if this suspension wears out, I'll put a Traxian suspension on it too, because why not? I'm not sure how much it could improve this. I mean, I know they say the Traxian rides better, but truthfully, I'm completely happy with this stock suspension on this Honda Goldwing. It just is awesome. Pour number four, I'm gonna go with the riding comfort of the bike. And I don't mean like the suspension, I mean like the seating position, the rider space behind the windshield, uh, the rider triangle, you know, when you're, the triangle that your ankles makes to your hands, to your shoulders. I never really thought much about rider triangle. I've always read about it, but I never thought much about it until I rode this Goldwing. On my Harleys, your rider triangle is kind of skewed because, you know, like, on, on like a Rogue Glide Ultra, or even a Heritage Softail like I had before, or even my Dyna Y Glide. Actually, most of my Harleys I've ever had, except my Sportster. Even my low rider had four controls, so yeah. I've always had like my feet forward sitting position on most of my Harleys, or all of them except my Sportster, really. So my feet were more under my hands, and then my shoulders were back under my butt, which is what they call a skewed rider's triangle. That means the majority of your weight's on your butt, on the seat. Whereas on this bike, because my ankles are kind of under, behind my knees a little bit, not much, but it's more of a, the Goldwing rides more, sits more like an adventure bike sitting position. Meaning you can stand up easily on the bike while you're riding very comfortably. I can ride for dozens of miles standing up on the bike if I have to stretch my legs while I'm on the highway and stuff. And that's what a good rider's triangle does for you. And this Goldwing has a perfect rider's triangle for someone my height, 5'8". I don't know if like, Maybe for taller, I don't know if it's different or shorter, I'm not sure, but for my height, it's perfect. And that's one of the big takeaways I realized when I test rode this bike before I bought it, compared to my Harleys, this bike just sat better. It just sat nicer, it just felt better, it was more comfortable. I could ride for all day and not get tired of sitting on this bike. With exception to maybe the seat a little bit, which I'll get into in the cons list. <laughs> but for the most part, this Goldwing's rider position, the sitting position, sitting comfort is beautiful awesome. For my fifth pro, I'm going to go with the engine, the flat six in this Honda Goldwing. Oh, this engine's this engine's perfect. It's fantastic. Yes, it's not a Harley V-Twin, so you don't have that thump thump muscle car feel to it. But that's really the only downside that I could think of for this engine. Because, you know, after riding Harleys for 25 years, I do miss the V-Twin feel a little bit, I have to admit. But in every other way, the motor in this Goldwing is superior to anything I've ever ridden before. It's smooth. It's super powerful. It's got lots of torque, lots of horsepower. It's a fuel efficient, so you get good gas mileage on 87 octane, so you can put the cheap stuff in it all day long. It runs so cool that I barely even feel, I don't feel heat off this thing at all, even on 100 degree plus days. There are fans for the radiators on the sides of the bike that spit out the air to the sides when it gets hot enough, but I've only ever had the fans kick on when I'm sitting still in hot days in like a traffic jam or something like that, or. You know, when the bike's not moving for prolonged periods of time on hot days. Only then will the fans even kick on. For the most part, the engine runs so cool that the fans aren't even needed. It's kind of funny because when the fans do kick on, you can actually, it's easy to tell because you can feel it in the bike and you can hear it. The fans are actually louder than the motor, than the motor is. <laughs> uh, which is kind of, I guess, silly, but... Um, and that's not, to, not to say that the fans are loud, they're just louder than the bike itself. And you can feel a little bit in the handlebars when the fans kick on. There's a little bit of vibration. Very, very little. I mean, you can just minuscule, but you can tell something's different. And it's because the, you know, the fans are running. That just goes to show how smooth this going is, though. I mean, this motor is just super smooth. It's like riding on glass. It's just beautiful. And it's so comfortable because of it. And it's so much faster than any Harley I ever owned. It's, like I said, the motor has lots of power. Yeah, I wasn't kidding. It's got lots of power. <laughs> it's downright fast. Like, it can be scary fast if you put it in sport mode. It just uh, almost rides like a sport bike. And I know 
sport bike riders will say no it doesn't but to a non-sport bike rider and i've ridden a few ninjas over the years and a, a few buells so i have ridden sport bikes but i had never owned one but this feels like a sport rider when you put it in sport mode with this engine it's got, it's got so much power and torque and delivery <laughs> you gotta be careful it's a rocket ship on wheels all right now for my top five cons list after owning this bike for 26,000 miles in three and a half years con number one i've got to say it's been my least favorite feature of the bike since day one and even to this day it's still the one feature of this bike i absolutely hate it's the honda gps i hate the honda gps on this bike coming from a harley davidson for you know, the harley gps is so great the harley gps is wonderful it has good colors for the roads it has good contrast for the backgrounds it has good navigation great search features it has nice riding options for motorcycle riders like twisty roads options stuff and the honda gps has none of that <laughs> the colors for the roads suck the contrasts are terrible it's hard to see during the day hard to see roads or anything the search function is terrible searching for a destination on this thing is just it's easier to get my phone out and search on the phone than it is to search this a lot easier like i'll use a phone to get the address to put the address in here to get this thing programmed right it's just cumbersome uh, there is no twisty roads option it's just the honda gps is terrible my brother and a friend of mine have a garmin motorcycle gps's on their bikes and comparing their garmin gps's to this makes me cry <laughs> like i really thought about buying a garmin motorcycle gps just to put on the handlebars of my goal wing but to me, it just seems redundant. I mean, I have a built-in GPS. I should be able to use it. It should be functional. It should be good. It's not. It sucks. It's terrible. I wish Honda would reprogram this thing or do a software update that made it better, but I guess at this point, it's just not going to happen. And it's such a shame because a bike this awesome, this close to perfection, has that GPS holding it back from being just 100% awesome all the way across. Bothers me. I hate it. My number one feature that I hate the most on this bike is that GPS. The rest of the cons lists are kind of like nitpicks in a way. Um, I'll have con number two as the paint quality of the bike. The Honda paint is not as good as I was used to coming from owning Harley Davidson's. All of my Harley Davidson bikes, the paint held up fantastic for all seven of them. Between, you know, 50,000 miles, 80,000 miles, no matter how many miles I put on them, the paint was almost as good the day I traded them in from the day I bought them. Uh, the, the paint always looked good, it just it cleaned up nice, it held up good, and Harley, Harley paint is just fantastic. Whereas the Honda paint is soft, it scratches super easy. I've got a few blemishes in the paint now already, some scratches and some dings here and there. I have, I've waxed the bike a few times over the years, and that helps, but it doesn't, eventually it still, it still scratches up. It's just, the Honda paint just doesn't hold, hold up very well. I wish it was better. I love the color. The color's fantastic. This blue is wonderful. All the Honda colors are nice. Just the paint quality isn't that good. But that's kind of a minor nitpick. I mean, I didn't buy this bike to put it in the shows and to win trophies. I bought this bike to ride it and put miles on it. So I'm not too concerned with the paint. I mean, the paint's acceptable. It's okay. It's just not great. Con number three is going to be this center compartment door. It's tricky to open. <laughs> The button has never worked right, and they don't work right on any of the uh, Honda Gold Wings, the new, the new version. This button is terrible. You gotta press it a certain way on a certain side of the corner of the button to get it to pop open right. And if you don't know the trick to open it, it's really hard to open. Like, there's no lock on the center door, but thieves probably couldn't get into this thing. They could, they probably try, they wouldn't be able to figure out how to open the dang thing. That's how hard this button is to press to get this thing open. Once you learn the trick, you get to fill with it a bit, but it's still, it's, you can get it open. It's just, the button should be designed better. And again, that's a minor nitpick. I mean, if you have a goalie with a, with an airbag on it, you won't, you won't even have this. But I do like the compartment. It's handy. I mean, it's great for storage, like machetes and other stuff and wallet, whatever. It's, it's nice to have. It's just hard to open. <laughs> again, that's a minor nitpick, but when, when making the cons list for this goalie, it was, it was, I had a search to come up with five cons, to be honest. So I'm going to list this center compartment as one of my cons. Con number four will be the luggage space on the bike. Now, it's got okay luggage space on this bike. It's not terrible. 
And when I'm riding by myself, even on long distance trips, I've got enough storage here for me for it to pack for a week or two, it's fine. No problems with that. But the problem arises when I'm riding two up, when deer's on the back and we go on long trips. With both deer and I on the bike, trying to pack for a week or so on a trip when this bike is difficult. I mean, it's really hard. Like we have to pack really efficiently and compromise what we're bringing and not bringing. And deer has a full face helmet. She sometimes wears my old peanut shell helmet. I have a little half helmet. It's not even a half helmet, it's less than that, but she wears that a lot because it's smaller and it's, it's more comfortable and stuff. But she does have a full size helmet, a full face helmet. And we can't put both our helmets in the back of this thing. My three quarters helmet with her full face. It's hard to, you, you can get it to close, but only if those two things are the only thing in here back here. You can't have anything else in the back, in the top case. So I do wish there was a little more luggage room on this bike. Now the new Gold Wings, like the 20, 2020 and above, I think, they slightly enlarged the size of this, this top case on the back. And that was a very welcome change. I'm glad to see Honda admitted they made a mistake there and they did make it bigger. So it's easier to get two full helmets in the back now on the, on the new models. But when it's 2018, the top case is smaller and there's not a lot of room on, for luggage on this thing. I have a luggage rack to put on the back of the, on the top of the lid here. I just haven't put it on yet, but when I put that luggage rack on, that'll help us pack better for long trips. I don't want to put a trailer on this bike. I know lots of going riders put the hitches on the back of their goal wings and they tow trailers behind them to solve the luggage space problem. You look at uh, Chris Caliente, he always has a trailer behind him. I don't want to do that. It would help, it'd be nice, yes, but I don't want to be towing a trailer on my, my motorcycle. I haven't got to that point yet. <laughs> Con number five is another nitpick, but kind of an important one. It's the horn button on this Gullwing. The horn button's small, and it's in a place where it's hard. I would say it's hard to get, it's not hard to get, but it's not easy to get at a moment's notice. It's not intuitive. It's very easy when I go for the horn to hit the other buttons around it, because by feel just the thumb itself, it's really hard to pick out the horn button from the other buttons and you know it's just too small it's in a bad place the horn needs to be more prominent larger because it's supposed to be an emergency button you know i mean if you, you should be able to hit the horn in a fraction of a second at a moment's notice and i can't on this bike even after three and a half years and twenty-six thousand miles the horn is still i have to look down almost to find the horn to press it and i hate that the horn shouldn't be that hard to get on this bike on all my harleys the horn was a big button that was easy to hit it just was it was there, there was no missing it. On this bike, I can never hit the horn without, you know, fumbling for it or looking at it. But again, as a con, that's kind of a minor thing. I think you know, most people probably don't have a problem hitting the horn. I know some people do though. I've read on the people in the forums complaining about the horn and stuff. So it's not just me. That's my five pros and cons though of owning this Honda Goldwing after three and a half years and 26,000 miles. A few other minor things to note about this bike uh, from an ownership point of view. I've had zero issues with the bike, like no maintenance or reliability problems at all, nothing. All I've done is change tires and brakes, and that's it. And the oil, the oil filters, you know, regular maintenance, that's all I've done. And that's good. 26,000 miles in three and a half years, the bike's been trouble free so far. Still the original battery in it. I know some people have battery problems on these gold wings. They die after two years or so. Mine's still going strong. I don't put it on the tender. Uh, during the winter, I will put it on the tender if it sits for like a month or so, but I ride during the winter, so it rarely sits for that long. So we get started regularly, but if it sits for more than a month, I will put, the, put it on the tender. But other than that, I never put the tender on it. And the only other thing to note, other than it's been wonderful, it's been a great bike. The seat is not... Okay, when I first bought the bike, I loved the seat. I thought it was great. But after a few long distance rides and a few thousand mile days and a few long days on the seat, the seat's not perfect. Um, it's comfortable for a few hours, for half a day. It's great for me. But after being on it for 10 plus hours or eight plus hours, it, yeah, I get a little bit of, um, I'm not gonna say saddle sore, but I get richety in the seat. And the seat could be better, I have to admit. I know when this Goldwing came out, a lot of people complained about the stock seat. They wanted a better seat for it. And I thought it was, it was fine for me, but now, if there's some long distance rise, the seat could be better. The back seat is perfect. The back seat's wonderful. Uh, Deer loves the back seat and it's much more comfortable than the front seat. I will give her that. The back seat's great. 
Uh, the front seat, I think, could be a little more comfortable. And I've thought about changing it out for an aftermarket, but I want a seat that still has the heated functionality that this one has. And I haven't, I haven't looked in a while, but last time I looked, I couldn't find one, an aftermarket seat that was better than this, that had the heated seat functionality. There are some more comfortable seats available, but you don't get, they, they lose the heat function then. I don't want that because the heat, the heated seats are nice on this thing. I love the heated seats. So the seat's a minor nitpick. It's not, you know, it only rears its head when I'm on the bike for an all, for all, an all day ride. And even then it's okay. It's, it's not saying, you know, I'm not saying I'm uncomfortable, but it could be better. Other than that though, I've got to say after 26,000 miles in three and a half years, I love this bike more than the day, the day I bought it. Like, it's only gotten better the more I ride it. As you get used to it, you get used to the ride modes, get more used to sport mode and how it handles and the curves and stuff. This bike is just perfect. And my biggest problem with this Goldwing is that it's so good, I don't want any other bike anymore. <laughs> like, if there wasn't a bike on the market today, I would take over this right now. Maybe I'm stuck with a Honda Goldwing. <laughs> Although I will admit, the Indian the Pursuit, the Challenger with the Torpeg on the back, I like that. I haven't ridden one yet. I'm pretty sure I would love it because I love the Challenger. But I don't think the Challenger would be enough to get me to give this up. But the uh, the Pursuit, I mean. But the Pursuit does have adjustable electric windshield like this does. So, and the Pursuit has that V twin feel, that Harley V twin feel. So, the Indian Pursuit's probably like a Harley Goldwing in a way. And that would be kind of neat, I think. But it's probably not enough to get me to give this bike up. Like, I've gotten spoiled by the DCT and the smooth engine and this, this flat six. Yeah, I'll probably have this bike another, definitely another three and a half years. I'll probably have this bike for 10 years yet. I don't see me get rid of this for a very long time. So that's my review. 25,000 mile, three and a half years, yada, yada, yada. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below in the comment section. If you have any questions about, you know, how the bike's held up or any little details that you want to know about or whatever, feel free to ask. I'll answer whatever you want. And I probably won't do another review of this bike until I hit 50,000 miles now. I did a two year review a while ago. I'll put a link to that up here in the corner for my two year review. I've done now the 25,000 mile review. I think now I'll wait till I get to 50,000 and then I'll review it again. So on that note, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care, ride safe. See you next time. That was kind of before. Who was kind of five? Ooh. What's con number five? Oh. That's my five pros and cons though of owning this Harley. Yeah. Is this still recording? I hope so. Whew. The wind just picked up. That feels great. <coughs> Duh, pardon me. <laughs> Alright, hopefully it's recorded.